Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. In the Bible, the book of Revelation predicts the end of the world. Today we're gonna to interview an author who has written a book about the four horsemen, including North Korea, Iran, and the coming world war. Tim Cohen is next. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we normally like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a live in-studio interview with a dear friend, a man I've known over 30 years of my life. I'm introducing to you an author of this exciting new book. It is called North Korea, Iran, and the Coming World War. This man is an expert on biblical prophecy here to explain to us some highlights from the book of Revelation, my friend Tim Cohen. Tim, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Chaps, pleasure to be with you. So I'm honored to have you on the show. You're a first time guest, but a long time friend. How did we meet? Air Force Academy, uh, in fact, going to Bible studies, as I recall. Yes, back to yeah. Victory Chapel in 1988, 89. Uh, when I first got saved in 86, actually, yeah, 86, 87, wasn't it? Um, and you and I were cadets together at the Air Force Academy, uh, not to go over our long sorted history since then, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. We both left the military and mm -hmm. now you are an author. You are a, a studious, uh, I'm gonna say expert because you know a lot more than I do about biblical prophecy. How did you get interested in this? Actually, uh, I was called, I believe, by God in 1987. Uh, God showed me some things on Revelation that were pretty strange. I asked him to explain, for example, the imagery in Revelation 13 about the Antichrist and the first beast and so forth. And in a month of having done that, um, I had in my hands the initial hard evidence that led to a book called The Antichrist and the Cup of Tea, which I began still at the Academy, uh, which gives the first hard evidence, biblically testable evidence on the identity of the Antichrist. So I began with that. And uh, because that was a pretty dramatic thing that the Lord showed me at that time, I didn't know how long we'd have, if we'd have decades the Lord came back, or if this meant it was soon. And right. So. Um, well, I wanna ask you yeah. specifically, uh, in Revelation chapter six, which is what we're gonna, we're gonna narrow our focus today, mm -hmm. there is this image of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I'm, I'm gonna summarize, you can correct me, but I'm thinking they're the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. And those are not to be confused with the white horse that Jesus rides back at the end of Revelation to, to redeem his people. But what are the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Well, the first one goes forth conquering and to conquer, the, the rider on the white horse, and uh, is given a bow and uh, a wreath that's kind of like what you'd receive in winning an ancient Roman game, for example, or a Greek victor, so a victor's wreath. And um, that's more or less what the first rider does. Not a lot of detail there, but just like the imagery in Revelation 6 on the Antichrist is literal, it turns out the imagery on the four horsemen is literal. I address that in my books. This particular book is focused on the second rider, which is a, a rider who goes forth on a fiery red horse, and he's given a great sword so that men would kill one another and peace is taken from the earth. Again, it sounds fairly obscure. Yeah, and when Christians looked at these things down through the centuries, they didn't really understand them as necessarily literal. They might have thought, okay, maybe this is gonna represent a nation or the imagery will be somehow associated with the person when the time comes for it to be fulfilled. And it turns out in reality, those things are true in our day. And what is the black horse? So the black horse, uh, typically that's the translation you see in an English Bible. It's really um, in the Greek, more of a cerulean blue uh, with reddish hues and gray blacks very much like Blucifer, that blue horse outside Denver International Airport when its eyes are glowing red at night. Oh, I hate that thing. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's very much that color combination. Um, and it too literally exists. The Blucifer is a perfect example. And then uh, and then there's a pale horse, the fourth yeah, horse. The fourth horse typically translated as pale or ashen, but it's really pale green gray uh, in the Greek. And the implication of the Greek text is that it's uh, rotting flesh in color, like rotting human flesh is the color more or less. Oh, it sounds kind of gross. Yeah. 
So, so those four horsemen are kind of symbolic of something. And you have written this book, I'm gonna hold this up again and let you explain the subtitle because the title is North Korea, Iran and the Coming World War. The subtitle is Behold a Red Horse. So you think, and, and this is a thick book, about almost 800 pages about the second horseman of the apocalypse. Now, aren't you extrapolating a lot to take that one phrase and put it into 800 pages? So of course, uh, we don't get a lot of detail in scripture when we talk about these seals. Ultimately, history reveals what happens around And there's seven those. seals in Revelation 6? Yes, well, there's six that are addressed in Revelation 6. The seventh seal is addressed subsequently in Revelation, but there are seven seals total. Okay. And um, so this one, the fiery red horse, I talked about nations or individuals being represented by the symbolism. It turns out, for example, that North Korea's uh, capital, downtown Pyongyang, is overlooked by this horse called Kalima from Asian mythology that is a fiery red horse able to leap, you know, great distances and abound, if you will. It's like a fiery red pegasus. There's a statue that overlooks their capital like that, and the symbol is on some of their currency. They name some of their tanks and some of their armaments and missiles after this thing. Uh, they call it Kalima or Kanama. Uh, we had the Red Horse Brigades that faced off against North Korea during the Korean War because of this symbolism. So North Korea basically is represented uh, in Asian mythology based on their national symbolism as a fiery red horse. And when we seek, speak about the sword, Islam is known as the religion of the sword. That's a pretty a common thought today, has been for a long time. North Korea not only refers to its nuclear missiles as a treasured sword, quote unquote, but you have um, Iran, which has the sword on its flag, aligned with North Korea as an ally behind the scenes. Um, so I'm basically suggesting that North Korea and Iran together, and then ultimately more of the Islamic world will become involved like Saudi Arabia with the US and so forth. So I remember- We'll all be involved in a, in a conflated set of wars. Let's take a short break. When mm -hmm. we come back, I'm gonna ask Tim Cohen about the alignment of North Korea with Iran. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation how to see the Holy Spirit, angels and demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99 or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God, get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org, get this important Bible study series for you and your church, or call us at 866-Obey-God right now. I wanna make a special offer available to our television viewers, and it's our new exclusive limited edition In God We Trust wall calendar. This is good through June of 2019, and we're running out, so you really need to pick up the phone. Why would you want an inspiring calendar? Well, listen, it's got quotes from many of our past presidents, starting with General George Washington, Abe Lincoln, Dwight David Eisenhower, President Ronald Reagan, even George W. Bush. Anytime they talked about their faith, we captured it and put their quotes on a calendar you can hang on your wall. Please pick up the phone today and call us at 866-Obey-God for your gift of just $15 plus $4 shipping. We will rush you this calendar and inspire you in the months ahead. Call us at 866-Obey-God or write to us right now at P.O. Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. Enclose your best donation and we'll ship you this calendar right away. Defending your religious freedom here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by author Tim Cohen, who wrote this book, North Korea, Iran, and the Coming World War. Now, Tim, I remember one of the State of Union addresses of, of President George W. Bush. He talked about the axis of evil, mm -hmm. which was North Korea, Iran, and Iraq. Now, now since then, we've invaded Iraq, maybe they're uh, a struggling democracy, but Iran and North Korea are still part of that 
axis and they're totally against the United States and Israel's interest. Yes, and actually Syria was part of that axis too. And when we look at this symbolism and uh, what I'm talking about, I'm giving all the, the military and political and geostrategic analysis in the book so people can get the whole picture of, you know, even what our intelligence agencies are saying about what's happening today with Iran uh, and North Korea. But the reality is they're allied behind the scenes. Uh, the U.S. has been told that we had to have, for example, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA nuclear accord with Iran to prevent Iran from going nuclear. The reality is Iran tested its first nuclear bomb in 2008. Iran may well have nuclear tipped ballistic missiles in Venezuela right now pointed at the U.S. And I've documented that in the book. There's a lot the public hasn't been told. So our country is in far greater danger than we've been told. And but, Iran has been mm -hmm. providing rockets and rocket technology. Uh, North Korea has been giving this to Iran for decades. Uh, and President Trump has been rattling his sword, so to speak, Ra you know, first against North Korea, but then he had a peace conference with Kim Jong-un. Now, President Trump has been threatening war against Iran and I don't know if they're gonna back down or if this is gonna result in a coming world war. You think it will? I'm certain it will. I believe that North Korea and Iran are the two major entities, primary ones, we're told under that second seal. And according to scripture, that leads to men killing one another and peace being removed from the earth. Wow, so it's biblical prophecy that there will be a world war and you interpret that as being related to Iran and North Korea. Is the United States mentioned in scripture? It is, in fact, a lot of people suggest the US isn't, they say, the United States is absent from Revelation, therefore something happens to take the country out of the picture before all of these things happen, like the Great Tribulation and so forth. That is false. So for example, in Revelation 12, there's a woman who shines like the sun at the beginning of the chapter, and around her head is a garland of 12 stars, and then we see that the dragon wants to destroy her son. She's giving birth, the dragon wants to destroy her son, the red dragon, Satan. And so she flees to her place in the wilderness, but she's given two wings of a great eagle to do so, to help her flee. So again, all this symbolism actually literally exists. In the United States, its national symbol is a bald eagle. Yeah. Right above its head, between its wings, is a coronet of 13 stars. The 13th star is in the center and the other 12 stars are arranged as a Davidic star, like Israel's national symbol. Yeah. The star in the middle is the woman shining like the sun. The other 12 stars arranged as a Davidic star, and these stars in context in scripture do represent Israel. They represent Israel's 12 tribes, the, the apostles and so forth, as well as ultimately the church. And that US seal, I think I've seen it in many places, may even be on our currency. Well, it's the presidential seal. You know, it's the national seal of the United States. The obverse of that is the pyramid, you know, some, a pagan symbol, but the pyramid With the and the all seeing eye and the so forth, right? Eye, yeah. But the, the front of the seal is this imagery described in Revelation 12. So the implication, in other words, Dr. Chaps, is that the United States will be involved in helping believing Israel, because it's believers who are gonna flee when the great tribulation comes to Israel and Jerusalem and so forth. The United States, believers in the US, perhaps the president, we'll see when the time comes, will facilitate that evacuation. And you believe, as I do, that for God to continue to bless America, we need to stand with Israel with all of our might. Uh, how does Israel factor into this end times war that you're talking about? Israel's at the heart of it. In fact, um, you know, when President Trump started to threaten North Korea, so much last year and everyone was concerned the war was about to immediately break out. And then more recently, when he began to speak in a similar manner to Iran, literally the day after this book went to press in July is when he did that, when he began to speak in a similar manner to, manner to Iran. Um, President Trump has gone on record, others have, in saying that we wouldn't be in this place of threatening North Korea in this way and in being on the cusp of war with North Korea if it weren't for what North Korea did to an Israelite, Otto Wormler, whom they so abused in North Korea that they turned him into a vegetable and he died shortly thereafter. He was an American citizen? Of, yes. But I, I didn't know that he was Jewish. Yes. Interesting. And it was because of what they did, North Korea, 
and when they released them and they died quickly upon release, that a lot got stirred up in our Congress and Senate and with President Trump yeah, and things got a lot more serious toward North Korea very quickly as a result. Let's take another short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Tim Cohen about the tribulation, this seven year period that's described in the Bible, are we already in it? Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Tim Cohen, who is a biblical prophecy scholar and has written this book, North Korea, Iran, and the Coming World War. Tim, where can people find and buy a copy of this book? It's available both in print, like a paperback, and also on Kindle as an ebook. And you can get the software for free from Amazon. Both are available through Amazon. Okay, and you also have a website? Prophecyhouse.com, yes. Prophecyhouse.com. Um, and this is part of a series of books. You have a, a, a sequel, I'm gonna call it, to this book. Uh, this one was just released in July, but you have another one coming out next year. Yes, there's a companion book, Dr. Chaps, called Israel, quote unquote, Peace and the Coming World War, The Great Tribulation is Near. Israel, so, Peace and the Coming War. Yes, so this book is focused more on what's happening in the Asian region and with Russia and China and North Korea and Iran, and then Israel peripherally because of the Iranian threat toward Israel and even the North Korean threat toward Israel. And then um, the subsequent book will be focused more on the Middle East arena. And that's coming out next year. Yes. So let's get into the tribulation. Uh, <clears throat> biblical scholars have for years speculated on what the book of Daniel describes as a seven year period of time that will approximate the end of the world and after that comes the judgment, and maybe after that comes the, the thousand year reign of Christ, what people call the millennial. Uh, are you, where's your rapture theology with regard to the tribulation? Uh, there's no question, Dr. Chaps, biblically that it's post-tribulational. Much of the church has been lied to. Yeah, and there's every possibility that it's begun, that we're now in it. I'm not saying it has. We could be I'm in the seven year tribulation right now. <laughs> Yes, and in this companion book that's coming out next year, I identify with hard evidence, everything is evidence-based, the treaty or the covenant that may have triggered the start 
of that seven year period. And I say may because I won't know until we see certain events actually transpire or not. Now the wars with North Korea and Iran are coming. It's only a question of when, not if. If we are in the last seven years, then I would expect those wars to begin between now and mid January of 2019 next year. So roughly, you know, within the next um, five, six months. And if we don't see the wars begin in that time frame, then we've got more time. We're not in the tribulation week. Well, I pray for peace. Uh, you know, people, a lot of our critics, the atheists say, oh, Christians, we want war because that will hasten the end of the world and somehow we get rewarded for that. But we're against the idea of war uh, and we support Israel, not because uh, you know, we wanna save or convert them, although Jesus, I suppose, came and died for their sins the same as ours, but because the Bible commands Christians to love the Jews and to love Israel. And, and I think America will be blessed if we do so. Um, tell me, how does this unfold with regard to what you've written on the red horse? The sequence? Yeah. Uh, war with North Korea, Iran becoming involved, ultimately Israel, Saudi Arabia, the US, China, Russia, all jumping into that fray. NATO necessarily becoming involved because of the United States. And in the book, I address things like coming strategic realignments, multiple international flashpoints around the world. So how this might actually lead to World War III, what seems like a simple, let's clobber North Korea quick kind of a war. First of all, North Korea has the ability to hit the United States with a nuclear tip ballistic missile, and it, which uh, would involve an EMP strike, electromagnetic pulse. If that happened, and Iran may have that ability too, like I said, they may have nuclear tip missiles in Venezuela, literally right now. If that scenario were to occur, they could take out our electric grid upon which our own military depends, kill much of our population within the first 10 years. The estimates are as much as 100 million Americans dead within the first 10 months, nine to 10 months. From starvation as a result of lost electricity. Starvation, not disease, by direct strike. thirst, ind uh, basically indirect death because all of the infrastructure on which we depend is suddenly gone. Planes, cars, phones, yeah. computers, all of it. Uh, I believe America needs to harden our critical infrastructure against the possibility of an electromagnetic pulse blast, whether it's from China or as you say, from either of these two other enemies. And I, I seriously hope that our government wakes up to that. That's a major reason actually that I wrote the book, Dr. Chaps. Yeah. So then what happens? After this war, how does the Bible move into the third or fourth horseman of the apocalypse? So following the second seal and the second horseman, we get this black horse or you know, cerulean blue, gray, black, etc. Its rider goes forth carrying a pair of scales that would seem to either associate with commerce or international law or both. And in effect, food becomes very expensive. It takes a day's wage to buy a loaf of bread, you know, I, I presume in much of the world. But it leads to starvation and disease and death at that point. That's more or less what the second seal is about. Although there's another aspect to it, which is preserving uh, wine and oil. I won't get into the details on that. I address that in the books, a different book from this one. And um, then the fourth horseman follows from that. At that point, we're in world war. So these things build in succession. And that's beginning, the, I think, related to the rise of the Korea. Antichrist. Yes, and so I have a book called The Antichrist and the Cup of Tea that gives hard evidence for his identity. It also addresses what we'll see when he rises to power. But a primary thing that the world will see is we'll see Jerusalem surrounded by the militaries of the nations where the world seeks to take half of Jerusalem by force and war. In other words, Israel will not cede it through any kind of agreement. It'll be taken by force from the nation. Well, the UN's Only already half trying to set aside East Jerusalem as if it belongs to the Muslims. Yes, and the Muslims are trying to stir up the world to take East Jerusalem by force. They'd like to take all the whole city, but they'll settle with cutting the baby in half right now. And so when we see that, that's an indication that the great tribulation, the final three and a half years leading to the Lord's return has begun. And in conjunction with that, the foretold antichrist will arise and the global government will be constituted, even though we'll be in world war. Do you think, um, obviously there's a, there's a strong Islamist impulse into what the antichrist goal is, and that is to destroy Israel, obviously to destroy America if we were gonna, if we were gonna help Israel. But what about the 200 million man army 
Uh, is that, that comes from the East, that's in, in the Bible, is that something to do with Red China? Yes, uh, everyone thinks that pretty much who looks at this subject and I agree with that. China and, has the ability to mount such an army. And what about uh, in Ezekiel 38, there's Gog and Magog that are coming from the north and, and somebody puts a hook in their jaw to bring them down against Israel. Is that a reference to Russia? It involves Russia, it also involves Syria, and there are a variety of uh, allies associated with Gog and Magog. So there's Togarma, which many think would be Turkey, Gomer, which many would think would be Turkey or Germany, uh, Persia, Iran, Kush and Put, so presumably Ethiopia and Libya. So a variety of nations become involved in that coalition, uh, that invasion. Tim, we have just over a minute left, and boy, I wish we could uh, take some more time. When you write your next book, we're gonna have a whole another interview about this. But would you lead our audience in a world, in a, in a prayer for world peace? I would be happy to do that, Dr. Chaps, thank you. Heavenly Father, in Yeshua's name, Jesus' name, we come before you and we praise you and thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, for your goodness toward us, for showing us beforehand what's coming, for enabling us to pray as we are now. And Lord, Scripture says that the prayers of a righteous man avail much, and there are many righteous, Lord, in this audience. We pray, Lord, and I pray that those who are listening would pray with us, that you would bring peace to Jerusalem, peace to the world, Lord, your peace, not the false peace that the world proclaims. And in the meantime, Lord, that you give us peace in our hearts despite the chaos and the trouble in the world. And Lord, we pray that you would just um, enable us to prepare for our families, to prepare for our nation, to be as prepared as we can be, Lord, to act, Lord, on your word and the things that you've shown us and taught us in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. amen. And the good news is, after all of this, Jesus comes back on a white horse, he redeems his church, and we win. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth, there will be a new Jerusalem, and Jesus will reign, not only for a thousand years, but for all of eternity with the church at peace by his side. Amen. I'm Dr. Chaps. Uh, Tim's book is available at prophecyhouse.com. Again, North Korea, Iran, and the coming world war. Tim, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Dr. Chaps. Amazon.com too. And Amazon. Yeah, All right, we're out of time. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.